Hi, I'm Josh Welton from Brown Dog Welding, and uh, I'm here today at Max Grundy's shop. Uh, we're in sunny Southern California, so we get to work outside on his COE. Uh, this beast had um, step pads on it that are being removed, uh, so we've cut holes and then cut little filler pieces uh, like that that we're going to put in. We're using the Millermatic 211, uh, which is nice because it's got the multi-voltage feature. Uh, you can run it on 120 or 240. Today we're running it on 120, so it's a little bit lighter on the duty cycle when you do that. But it's uh, the portability and the versatility is really nice. Uh, for this, we're not going to need we're not going to need to use you know 240. Um, one of the nice things about the Millermatic 211 is it's 38 pounds, so it's super lightweight. I actually put it right up here on the trailer with me, uh, so I can so I can get a better reach on this on this fender. One of the new features on this machine is that it has uh, auto set for wire, for wire size. So you, whether you have 24, uh, 30, or uh, 36 diameter wire, you just set it up and it'll automatically set the wire speed for you. Uh, you can adjust it manually too if you'd rather do that. Uh, and then it has um, uh, many, many more options for material thicknesses than the old machine had and it has different options for different gases, which makes it super easy to use. The other benefit of this machine is if you set up for a spool gun to weld aluminum, it automatically detects everything and the machine changes over so you don't have to set up a bunch of stuff to make it do what you want to do. Uh, you just act plug and play, you're good to go. All right, so uh, we're gonna start working on this. Um, the holes are already prepped. Uh, you got paint around the area removed. I think they're actually gonna do with this, they're gonna leave, it's gonna be kind of a patina style truck. So. Um, but we got enough paint, or enough paint removed so that we can put the, uh, the panels in or the, little, the tiny little patch spots in uh, with, uh, without uh, burning up the paint and contaminating the weld. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to use the MIG to tack it in. I'm using O30 wire um, and uh, I'm going to use a, a, a magnet behind it to hold them in place and then, and then tack it and, uh, and we'll do some of that and see how it goes. For this project today, we're using Hobart HB28 filler rod. We're using O30. Uh, it's got a higher uh, deoxidizer content, so it actually uh, it gives you a nice, a nice clean weld without a lot of impurities, which is nice when you go to sand it down. You don't have any, you know, prosty holes or anything like that, uh, which is nice when you're you, when you're welding on old steel. It makes it really handy. So, what I'm going to use is a, a magnet to put the to hold the filler in place. Um, some people will, will channel the metal. Um, you can put little tabs on it. Uh, you can get a tight enough fit where it just sits in there, like I had this one already set up in there. Um, you just tapped it in with the hammer. But with the magnet, you do it, and, uh, and you're not going to get it to drop through. And then if you have a high side, you tack that in first. So you tack the high side that's closest to flush first, and then it'll either pull this up, or when you're done, you can, you can pop it up with the hammer. All right, so I'm going to tack this piece right here first on this side, where the high side is, and I need to pull up or I'll hammer it down. I got that side tack. See the fan kicks on pretty, pretty close right away being on 110, but that's not a big deal. If you have a body hammer, you'd want to use it, but I'm improvising today. And really just two tacks for now is good. So uh, I'll go on and keep doing these and then come back and spread around the tacks to keep the heat, the heat down. Just checking to make sure that it didn't swing out, but it stayed pretty flush. One thing to consider when you're working outside is the sun. Um, these helmets have a sensitivity setting, so uh, a lot of guys will 
will get freaked out if they if they don't often work outside. Um, you know the 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 auto darkening will just will just come on the sun. The sun will actually trigger it. So what you want to do is you want to lower the sensitivity setting um, so that numerically lower uh, it won't the sun or ambient light or whatever won't trigger it. Uh, only the the weld will. So I actually have it all the way down to one uh, out in this Southern California sun, so I can see right until the right until I light the arc and then it uh, and then it turns on. Um, plus I'm using the the new Infinity series helmet. This is the Stars and Stripes version. Uh, the largest viewing area in the industry. It's got 13.4 square inches, and it's got the new new headgear, which is super comfy. So I'm really digging using this uh, using this today. I like to keep the magnet back there as little as possible because, well, realistically, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect our our tax that much. Uh, magnetism can can mess up a, a weld and play tricks with the puddle. So. Uh, just out of habit, I like to uh, I like to take it off. Sometimes on uh, on on this metal with the mig uh, when you're migging it, uh, a good habit to get into is clipping the end of the wire because if it gets uh, if it's oxidized, then it won't clean. It won't give you a clean start, so uh, a nice habit is to be be clipping the wire after every time. Uh, don't always do it, but it's one of those things that if you have a trouble, if you have trouble starting the arc, it's uh, it's a good thing to do. All right. So now we have all of these little. Uh, small dime-shaped dime uh, patch pieces put in. Uh, I'm gonna go around and uh, it's not super thin, so I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about heat too much, but still uh, take my time, uh, just kind of do run little tacks around uh, each hole until they're all done. I'm gonna rough sand a couple of these down. Um, it's a lot higher buildup than you get if you did it with TIG, but uh, you know, MIG does the job. Uh, one thing, even sanding these down, you want, don't wanna to put too much heat in this sheet metal because you'll warp it. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with the flat disc and just get it close and then uh, we'll go through and finish sand it later. Uh, so now we're doing the grinding, it's a little bit louder. Um, I have really bad tinnitus now. I have a ringing consistently in my ear uh, from working in factories on and off since I was 18. So I religiously wear these when I do anything semi-loud uh, and hope that it doesn't get any worse. But for you young guys, if you think it's cool, hey, I'm, screw that, I'm not wearing my safety glasses or my hearing protection. It's, you get older and you realize that uh, you were just being dumb. So I'll put these in and start grinding. All right, so I don't have my, uh, my fine sanding equipment with me. I've just basically got this flat disc, and I don't want to take too much metal off of, uh, off of the base. So I just kind of knocked down a couple of these to show uh, you know, what you do. I probably actually got a little too deep here, um, but it's metal. You can always, always add more. Uh, with MIG welding, um, like I mentioned, you're going to get a higher buildup than you would if, uh, if you're using TIG. It's not a big deal. Um, I just went through and, and bumped a couple of these down with a, with a flat disc. Um, and then you go through. I don't have I don't have my stuff with me right now, but you go through with the finder, fine, finer sanding sanding uh, equipment, and uh, kind of get it down. With this, you're going to take out too much metal. But that's uh, I mean the holes are patched, and uh, now you just got to sand them down, finish them, and uh, and uh, you're good to go. So today we filled up these holes that were left over from the fender cover slash uh, step cover on this Coe. Uh, 
We use the new uh, Millermatic 211, and uh, if you want to check out more of that machine, hit millerwelds.com. And uh, if you want to see more of our videos, you can check them out at the website also, millerwelds.com. And if you want to see more of what I do, go to browndogwelding.com and have a good day.